What's going on everyone and welcome back to another episode of Paint Society, the channel where the learning doesn't stop when the video ends. Today we're with my buddy Steve and we're going to go over how to paint a car without a paint booth. We're going to go ahead and show you some of the techniques used if you don't have that maximum airflow and that controlled environment. So the story with this car is originally is brown. Now the owner actually wanted it red. So what he did is he went ahead on YouTube and he maybe watched too many of my videos and he primed it white and then he rattle canned it red. And by the time he got to the clear coat, it was a mess. So um, a friend of his actually had told him to grind it down for whatever reason. Two weeks of grinding down, he said he gave up and that's when he consulted Steve. And from that point, what Steve had to do is he had to take everything pretty much down to metal since half of the car was already grinded. So you can see here that, you know, Steve's working on it, getting the panels down to metal. He eventually did use uh, etching primer and then build the uh, surface back up with a urethane surfacer. And that's exactly where we are right now. Now, when it comes to a paint job just like this, a lot of you might have questions. Well, how much does a paint job cost? Well, that really depends on a lot of things. That can depend on the paint, the quality of the painter doing the work, the uh, amount of things that are removed. You can see here that they went ahead and removed the actual windows, uh, taillights, wing spoilers, handles, everything is off this car to ensure a good wraparound of paint in all of the edges. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the paint. So here's the paint. A lot of people ask, how much paint do I need? How much does paint cost? Well, paint costs a good amount of money. And this is a, you know, a more economical brand. This came to about uh, 200 bucks for the reducer and the paint. Now he did get a gallon and for a small car like this, you wouldn't really need the full gallon, maybe three quarters of the way, but just to be safe. And then going for more economical um, clear coat, this came in at around a hundred bucks with the uh, slow hardener, okay? So we'll take a look at the car once more as uh, Steven just goes around and he's just using a little bit of uh, self etching primer on the bare metal spots when sanding through. Uh, you sanded this up to 600 or 600 grit, okay? So a lot of you guys might say, wow, $3,000, right? But don't forget this whole car went down to bare metal. So you're paying actually for huh, what you don't see. And what you don't see is about 70 hours worth of work over the course of two weeks of stripping this all down to metal. So when it comes to painting a car, that does not mean that every car needs to be stripped down to metal, but this one particularly since it already was stripped in certain areas. So what I would tell you, a good range to think about if you're going to get your car painted uh, for a average job might be around the 1500 to 2000 price range but don't expect anything to be taken out. And if you're curious what that $1,500 to $2,000 paint job would look like, it'd be something like this, something that's spot primer, not taken down anymore, uh, something that has the mirrors still on, door handles, windows, all of these things are added cost, the bumpers, uh, still will get a good job, but your warranty won't be as good as taking everything off and wrapping that paint around all of the edges. And if you're serious about painting, you need a compressor that will give you enough air to get around the whole car. Now they got a 60 gallon compressor now, as that compressor is compressing air, it's hot, humid air. Well, the guys went ahead and they made this little makeshift cooler here to keep the actual compressor cool and the air cool. And then, well, they got an air dryer as well. This is gonna go ahead and take all the air, send nice clean air up and a little bit of overkill, but they have another um, air dryer, air water separator. From there, they're ready to paint. So a really good, clean little setup. No use, no need to actually, you know, take your piping and run 30 or 40 feet when you have something just like that. So before we go ahead and paint, we need to make sure there's no silicone or wax on there. So we're gonna take our wax and grease remover and he's got it in a pump sprayer and he'll go over the whole car. He's just using a basic white, uh, like a terry cloth rag and he'll perform this over the whole entire car. Now you do have that option of wetting the floor. This will go ahead and keep the dust down. Um, now you just have to be careful of how close you bring the water to the underside of the car because when spraying, right, if you're gonna get too close to spraying that water, it can create mist. And that mist can go ahead and get attached to the car or maybe on the rocker. So be careful of how much you're spraying uh, just also be mindful that water does create humidity. Uh, so that's another thing to think about. Paper or wetting the floor, your choice. 
Now the key to also having a clean paint job, whether in your booth or not, is clean taping. And you can see that there's not a whole lot of opening uh, crevices on the uh, tape job. He did use paper. We are using wheel covers. You might be able to save a little bit of dust if you do use paper, but if you're looking to just you know cover them up, uh, make sure that you do remove the inside fender liner so you don't get any overspray on that. You can see just paper here. It's your preference between paper or plastic, it doesn't matter. And here it is, a Honda Color Rally Red. So this mixes up two to one, right? So we're just gonna use the ounces and go to 14 for the paint and then 21 for the reducer. And we'll take this one up to 21 right here. We're good to go. This is a properly mixed uh, mixture, two to one. Two parts paint, one part reducer. And the gun we'll be using is a Tecna Pro-Lite 1.3. A great overall gun. Yeah, so we're ready to rock and roll and Steve's all suited up and good to go. Now he's gonna start here on the passenger side at the bottom of the door. And the reason why we're starting so low um, it's because, you know, you want to paint what you can't see for so many times you'll come back and uh, you'll miss these spots. So he's just continuing it. You see how he breaks it up between the uh, fender and the door. Uh, he has a nice consistent movement. He's got about probably 75% overlap. He's now carrying the paint into the quarter panel. So he's extended his paint about six inches into each um, panel. And this is a good way to keep your wet edge going. You'll see how now the quarter panel and the top of the A-pillar will now connect together. And pretty much what he's going to be doing is he's going to be moving that paint across the car instead of just moving in little sections, all right? Not once have I seen him stop his paint gun, all right? Yes, some of us new need a little assistance to get over those roofs, and I am one of those guys. So once more, keeping the paint moving, uh, he's going over the trunk, and uh, he'll connect this now with the uh, quarter panel now. He's spraying in and around, uh, I would say, 18 to 22 PSI. Uh, the paint will come out a little looking wet, but it will flash off uh, nice and smooth. And once again, you see here, six inches into that door, keeping it moving. This red nascent base coat really covered well. And there's something I wanted to show you here. You see how he's moving nice and even. He's very even with the panel. And he'll get to a point where he just flicks that wrist, all right? So you'll see here, right when he stops, flicks that wrist. You see how the pattern is now kind of missing the paint onto the fender. And once more, you'll see it flick at the end. That is what a true painter does in order to make sure those transitions are nice and smooth. Look at what the paint is doing. See the droplet size, nice and fine. That is exactly what you want in a painter. And here Steven's finishing up on the fender for the first coat of base. And notice that the hood and the fuel cap are missing. That's because they're going to get wrapped in a carbon fiber. Now you can see here that it is all nice and flashed off. This is what it should look like when it's ready for its second coat. This is about 10 minutes later. So we're ready to lay on that second coat. And you notice that we didn't use any sealer before we sprayed that base coat. Now that's because Steven went ahead and he prepped out his uh, primer really, really nice. He even primed it a couple times. Now, a sealer always will help you, but if you do prep that primer good, it is not 100% necessary. Um, it's really up to the consumer and what you choose to do with your own paint job. So here's the second coat. It's all done, and we're just going to go ahead now and check it over, make sure that we did not miss any spots because once it's cleared, it's just a little bit too late. And before you clear, make sure you check your shop and relocate any bugs that might want to land on your paint job. And after 30 minutes of the base flashing, it is now ready to accept the clear coat. Your biggest mistake is putting on that clear coat way too soon. Now we're using a 1.3 here, the same exact gun that Steven used for his base coat, but he's jacked up the pressure just a few pounds just to help atomize that clear coat a little bit. And boy, it is looking fine. Now, one thing that Steven also understands is that he never stops his clear coat on a gap. He doesn't want to build up the gap where the edge of the uh, door is or the edge of the quarter panel where paint generally does not flow out. 
He's like a robot and he's moving around 75% overlap to 80% overlap. Then moving a little bit slower than he was with the base. Watching the paint go on and wrapping around the paint all the way up the C-pillar. And then he'll extend it onto the roof. Now another thing that we both understand is that the first coat of clear is not going to be beautiful. We just want to get the paint on there. And well, if we get a run in the first coat of clear, well, it's going to be a lot harder to get out than we would if we got it in the second coat. Now you see your base coat is not perfectly flat, so laying down your first coat of clear will, well, it will reveal some bumps along the way, and this is perfectly fine. A good painter, an experienced painter, recognizes that this is a part of the job, and they don't try to slam on too much material. We want all the fumes and all the solvents to gas out. Now take a look right here. You see how Steven has the hose wrapped around? He's making sure that hose does not go into the door or into the A pillar or B pillar. A good sign of experience and well we've all had well let's not say that we've all had some issues before with hoses going into the car doors and we'd rather not talk about it now moving along to the quarter panel we can see the consistency of that fan pattern a good sign that this gun is spraying very well and very clean and one thing I love about Steven is he just keeps on moving truth be told this is the first time I've actually seen Steven paint and I am pretty impressed by how robotic his moves are just keeping it moving and I gotta say I would be tired around this point but he just keeps it moving at this point if we stop well we can have some dry spots and dry spots in a paint job is not a good thing although the first coat if we're gonna have any errors along the way it would be a good time wrapping things up on that front fender it is looking beautiful and at this point we are ready to allow it to flash now we don't want to deceive you any you take a look at the first coat there are some little bumps and uh, little defects along the way this is perfectly fine and that second coat will tidy things right back up and here we are moving on to our second coat to clear just about 10 minutes later now it's very important to check your technical data sheet to see when the appropriate time is between coats since all clear coats will generally be different. Now we're starting low in the same exact spot. And you can see that Steven is moving much, much slower. So with that first coat of clear on there, we've created like a glue, right? So now the second coat of clear is going to stick to it really, really well. We don't have to worry about paint coming down the panel. Now the biggest thing and our biggest problem you can run into is spraying scared. Now you see that Steven moves really slow and you might think to yourself, man, I would probably get a run if I was moving that slow. But remember that all clear coats are different and all spray different according to the tip size and well, what you have in the actual paint. So what Steven generally is doing here is watching the paint go on. Now you can see the roof here. What he does is he's separating into four quadrants on the second coat. That way he can really lay it on those horizontal surfaces and make it flow out. You'll get most dirt or dust in those horizontal surfaces just due to gravity itself. And you can see now with the second coat of clear going on that it does smooth out and will continue to smooth out as it flashes and as it dries. And moving now onto the driver's side corner panel, I want you to take a look at Steven's footwork. Moving very robotically side to side, making sure his panels are nice and wet. Now the one mistake we make sometimes on doors is, well, we think it looks good because we're looking at it from one angle until we see a big fat dry spot in the middle of the door. So make sure after you're done spraying that you look at it from maybe underneath and make sure it's all nice and glossy. And here we are just finishing up on the fender, wrapping this up in two coats. It is up to you if you want to do three, but I always recommend two coats. It's all it will need for a nice little buff. Well, I gotta say, without a booth, it looks really, really good. Now, what Steven will do is he'll cut down the surfaces where there might be any little nibs or anything like that. But that's also something you have to work out with the customer and be upfront uh, in regards to the final, final finish. Now, guys, if you learned something, and you want to go ahead and support the channel and get some merchandise, make sure you check out the link below. And don't forget to check out our Instagram, paint.society. On there, we have a lot of great information. And special thanks to Steve. Thanks for letting me come over here and uh, kind of show the type of work you do. Hopefully, we come back. And in the meantime, guys, it's Brian from Paint Society reminding you, don't overthink it. It's just paint. I'll see you guys on the next one.